and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about the admin tab, all the administrative functions within Centric Software, a lot of your foundational setting within the admin tab. So if we go ahead and jump into the software, we can take our mouse and jump over to admin. And the first thing we're going to talk about within the admin tab is we're going to talk about user roles. So before you add any users into the software, we need to discuss the roles. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into roles. By default, you may get a few roles out of the box with your software. For example, sales and super admin, I think, are the two roles that we may give you out of the box. You can always edit any one of these roles by clicking on a role and clicking edit, or you can create a new role from scratch. So, for example, if you didn't get the sales role out of the box, we can click on sales here, or we can add another role called super admin. Um, or for example, we can have another role called marketing. So you guys can create any role you want at any time within the software. Let's go ahead and take a look at the super admin role real quick and we're gonna go ahead and click on edit. Obviously the super admin role is gonna have every single permission in the software checked. Okay, so if you were to scroll down here, you would be able to see every single permission. If you come into the super admin role and you see a box unchecked, like for example, pull credit reports, we'll go ahead and click on that and then we will go ahead and click on save to make sure that the super admin role has everything within the software. You always wanna make sure that every single one of your roles in the software is assignable. This means that you can assign a file in the software, a contact to a software to this role or someone that has this role in the software, okay? And we'll go ahead and click on save role one more time. You can grant access to a parent role. So let's say for example, I wanted to create a role for sales here and click on edit. And maybe I want that parent role to be maybe a sales manager. Okay, so, so what I would have to do is I have to come back to the admin tab, click on roles. Let's go ahead and create a role called sales manager. And we can give this role maybe a few different permissions for now. We'll talk about these permissions here in just a second. And let's go ahead and make it assignable and let's go ahead and click on save. And then what we can do is we can come over to the sales role, we can click on edit, and we can make the parent role the sales manager role, okay? And then we can also choose a default note type. So if this role takes a note in the software, it's going to default to a certain note type, and then we can click on save this role, okay? So again, you guys can come in here and build out any sort of role that you want into the software. If you guys have an underwriting department, maybe a processing department, maybe an originating department, uh, a marketing department, again, you can come in here and create any role you want. When you title your role, as you scroll down, you're gonna see all the different things that a user can and cannot do within the software. So if you notice here, your main tabs at the top, you've got guidelines, contacts, advances, lenders, calendar, so on and so forth. Here on the far left-hand side, you're gonna see those same things. So you see guidelines, contacts, advances, lenders, creditors, calendar, enrollments, accounting, docs, files, e-marketing, reports, and admin. Depending on the industry you're coming uh, to us from, you may or may not have some of these uh, tabs within the software. Okay, so as you go through each one of these tabs, you can grant access to this role to this tab. For example, let's do calendar. And then of course, when you come in here, you can see each one of these permissions for the calendar tab. So for example, create events edit events, delete events, edit event types, create custom calendars. Each one of our permissions are pretty self-explanatory if you read the permission. And sometimes if you're gonna create a new role in the software and you're gonna give it a bunch of permissions, you do have the ability to come to the admin tab, drill into one of the clients, one of your, I'm sorry, one of your users here, and you can click on login as user and you can see what that role looks like. You can log in as it, uh, in this user and you can see what this role would look like for this user okay and all the things they can and cannot do so if I come back to the admin tab and I jump back into roles you can see here uh, that I can again edit any one of these roles that I want on the fly by clicking on the role and then clicking on edit okay so again go ahead and read what some of these uh, permissions are they're very self-explanatory and then like I said you can log in as that user in the software uh, to see what that role looks like okay so pretty self-explanatory as being able to create multiple roles in the system make those roles assignable and give those roles all sorts of different types of permissions okay now roles is what your users can and cannot do what we also have is something called field level permissions. 
field per, uh, level permissions is what the user can and cannot see in the software. We call this data suppression. So what I can do is I can click on field level permissions. I can create a new profile called sales, for example, and I can click on the green circle. And I can associate the sales role with this sales profile. And then I can come in here and I can suppress certain data from this profile. Let's say, for example, you don't want your sales team seeing social security numbers. Maybe you don't want them seeing bank account information. Maybe you don't want them seeing the history of the file. You can really come in here for all out-of-the-box fields and all your custom fields, and you can suppress certain data from this particular profile. And then you can uh, click on Save Profile. Okay, so like I said, roles is what your users can and cannot do. And then field level permissions, if we come in here and we look at that sales profile we created, we can tell this profile what we want those users to see and not see within the software. Okay, so you've got a few uh, different levels as far as the permissions built in the software. Okay, so that's user roles and that's field level permissions. And we get there by going to the admin tab, clicking on roles. Now, best practices in the software, once you create a role, is to create a team that goes along with that role. Okay, so what I can do is I can click on Teams, and let's go ahead and create one from scratch. Let's go ahead and do the Sales Team, and I'm going to click on Save Team. Now, you can see here we've got this team down here called Sales. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to associate the sales role with the sales team in the software. Okay, so no need to click on all boxes. Like I see a lot of uh, customers do this and then they choose this and they choose this as well. That's not necessary. So you only need to choose a role um, or if you don't want to choose a role and you want to choose a certain company for this role, you can do that as well. Or if you just want to choose a certain user to be on this team, you can do that as well. But most of the time, we're going to associate the sales role with the sales team. Okay, and then click on save team. So now here, we've got a sales team, and then you can see here, you've got this sales role associated with that team, okay? Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's do super admin, and we're going to click on save team, and now we've got the super admin team here, and again, we're going to associate this super admin role with the team, and we're going to click on save team, and let's go ahead and do one more. We're going to do sales manager and we're gonna click on Save Team, and we're gonna click on Sales Manager down here, same concept, and Sales Manager, and click on Save Team, okay? So now we have three teams in the software, and we've associated those roles with those teams. Here's why this is so important. If I jump into the Email Marketing tab, for example, and I click on Create Email Template, do you notice how over on the right-hand side here we have Share With, and you can share with Teams, or you can share with individual users. So what's nice about this is if you've created a bunch of email templates for your sales staff or maybe your underwriting staff or processing staff, you're going to share those email templates with teams so that if you hire a new employee and you give them the sales role, by default, they'll already have everything shared with them in the software, so you don't have to go back into the e-marketing tab and the contacts tab and the calendar tab and share all those templates with that new employee. Okay, so it makes life a lot easier. It makes it a bit more automated when you create a team with each one of your roles and you can share uh, templates and lists and other aspects of the software with teams versus just individual users. Okay, so we're going to get there by going to the admin team. That was roles, and then we also created some teams. Okay, now what you also have here is you have companies. Uh, some of us call this multi-company management. Some of us call this broker ISO management. Some of us call this affiliate management. Essentially, what you have the ability to do is add companies within the software below you. So you are the master use, uh, user license in Centric Software. Your company will always be the only company showing here until you add another company into the software. So let's say, for example, you guys have affiliates. 
or you've got outside brokers or outside ISOs, or maybe you're a funding company, but you also own a brokerage firm and you want both of those companies working under the same platform, but with two different logos, with two different email marketing tabs, with two different permissions. You guys have the ability to do that within the software. Okay, so anytime you want to bring on an affiliate and you want to grant access to the software so they can add leads into the software or they have full transparency on how you guys are working their files, you can come into the admin tab. We can go ahead and click in the companies like we did and then we can click on add a company. When you click on add a company, you always want to make sure you activate this company. You always want to make sure that your company is the parent company. And then you can label this company. Are they a law firm? Are they a lead vendor? Are they a marketing company, a partner, a servicing company? We can always add more here for you as well. You can come in here and put all the contact information for this company. And then if you wish to do so, you can even upload a company logo for this company and you can even choose a color scheme. Okay, so if you have, let's say you own a funding company and you also own a front end brokerage shop, but they have two different logos, two different companies, you can essentially have employees from the brokerage company log in and see their own logo and you can have the funding company log in and see their logo even though everyone's logging in essentially to the same platform. Okay, and then you can click on save company. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do test company. We're going to make them a servicing company. The parent companies be Centric Software. We're going to activate them. And I'm not going to fill out all the information here at the moment. I'll let you guys fill the information later. And then I'm going to click on Save Company. Okay, so now you can see here, I've got this cut test company down here below as a company. They don't have any users. They haven't added any leads into the software. And we haven't enrolled any of those leads into a payment program. Okay, so at any time, you can come in here and you can edit this company as much as you want. If you ever add users into the software associated with this company, you can come over here and see all those users. So actually, let's go ahead and talk about that here for a second. So if I jump into the admin tab, and now let's say you wanna start adding users into the software. You've created your roles, you've created your teams that are associated with your roles, and now maybe you've added a few companies. Now what we can do is start adding users into the software, okay? So I can go ahead and click on add user. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna give them a username. So let's do test user. And then we're gonna give them a password. What I normally do is make the password the same as the username and then put like two numbers on the end, like 77 or 88 or whatever you wanna do. And then you can associate this user with the company. So if you're going to be adding users and they're going to be a part of your staff, obviously you're gonna to wanna to choose your company. But if it's an outside broker, an outside ISO, maybe it's an outside affiliate or some sort of marketing company you're going to grant access to the software you're going to want to make sure that you associate this user with this particular company okay and then I can click on save user and now this is going to land you on the user settings page okay so a little quirky thing about our system you do have to come in here and put the password in one more time it doesn't matter because they're going to change the password the first time they log in you're going to choose the role for this user. So let's say we give them the sales role. Who does this user report to? And then are they an attorney or not? Okay. And then we're always going to require password change on first login. And we're always going to require email login info to this new user. And then of course, we're going to put in their name. So test user. What company are they associated with? It already defaults to that company. And then we're going to go ahead and put their email address in the software as well. Don't worry about payees. Don't worry about DocuSign. We have our own electronic signature built into the software. And then outgoing mail SMTP settings. This is very, very important, okay? This essentially is going to allow emails coming out of our system from you and your email servers, okay? So if you're using Gmail or maybe you're using Microsoft or maybe you're using GoDaddy, whatever email server you're using, you can actually Google uh, mail settings for that particular email server. So because we use Gmail here at corporate, I happen to know that the outgoing mail server is smtp.gmail.com. I happen to know the port number is 465. The username is always going to be the email address for this particular user. Okay, so we're going to put in username. And then the password is always going to be the password associated with logging in to this email account. So if this user has a password to log into their Gmail account, we want to make sure we put that password here. Okay, and then we requ can require auth and we can use SSL or we can use TLS. You can't do both, you can use one or the other. 
okay? Now, what you can also do is you can click on test SMTP settings once these are in to make sure it works. What happens sometimes is people change their password when they log in to their email accounts every now and then, maybe once a month or once a quarter. Um, and what's gonna happen is if your password changes in your email, this password is no longer valid, okay? So you can test SMTP settings and uh, it'll validate to make sure that it was uh, good SMTP settings. Okay, as we scroll down, you're going to see custom fields. Don't worry about those. Company contact access. Uh, you can choose different companies in here if you want this user to have access to certain company contacts. And then as we scroll down to shared user data, you're going to have all your users stacked right here in this column. If you want a certain user to be able to see their own data in the software along with other users' data, you're going to come down here and highlight the names of those users. So let's say it's a sales manager and you want them to have access to two or three different users' data as well. You're going to come in here, you're going to highlight their names, and then you're going to click on Save User. Okay, so now this user will be able to have access to the data in the software that's assigned to themselves and the users that you chose here. If you choose everyone, this user is going to have access to every data point in the software no matter who it's assigned to. And then, of course, if you leave this blank, this user is only going to be able to see data in the software assigned to themselves. Okay, and then we can go ahead and click on Save User, and an automatic email will go to this user with their password and uh, login credentials, and they can change their password for the first time. Okay, and then you can click on the Admin tab, and you can be able to see all your users stacked down the page here. Okay, you can filter your users by active or suspended. You can filter your users by a company and you can filter your users by a role as well. You can always drill into any one of these users over here on the far right. I can click on the arrow and this takes me right back into this user area where I can edit all the different information for this particular user. Okay, so this is where we find users in the software. This is where we can see all the users in the software. Now let's imagine for two seconds that you terminate a user or maybe a user goes on maternity leave or the user uh, leaves the company. Okay, what you can do is come in here, you can click on this user and you guys have the ability to suspend a user or sometimes you have the ability to delete a user. It's never good practices to delete a user out of the software. And the main reason why is because that user has all sorts of history associated with their account. So our system tracks every click, every email, everything ever done in the software with each user. And if you delete a user, you essentially are going to skew your reporting on what that user did in the software over the course of time. Okay, what you also never want to do is rename a user. So if I come in here and let's say that... Um, this Mike Lindsay guy was terminated from the company, you don't want to come in here and rename him to a different employee for the same concept. Now, all the history and date and timestamps in the software are now, are now associated with that new user versus the old user, which you don't want. That's obviously not going to be correct. That new user didn't do any of that past history. Okay, so it's always best practices to never delete a user, always suspend a user if you can, and then obviously never rename a user um, to another user. Okay, so we talked about roles, we talked about teams, we talked about companies, and then we also talked about adding a user in the software and how we can manage those users. Okay, what you also have here is something called system log. In our software platform, we try to log as many things as we possibly can to make sure that you have access to who's doing what at what time. So you can come in here and choose a date range, you can come in here and use a user, and you can also click on keywords and click on filter, and it'll show you all the activity, all the logs for that particular user for that particular date range if you ever want to do some research. Okay, so the system log essentially is just a log of all activity built into the software and it gives you a few filters. Another button we have here in the admin tab is called our settings tab. Okay, this is something you want to do right from the get-go so that you can start using the software. The first thing we have here is general settings. So this is a lot of the data on you guys, on your company. The next one we have here is called customer portal settings. So depending on the package that you came on board with, you have unlimited client portals where you can actually have a fully white labeled portal for your clients to log into. And you can control those portal settings right here on this page. So I want to use my company logo. I want to make sure I send the welcome email when I create a client portal. Where do I want that welcome e email to come from? I can choose an email address on file. Okay, so if I do info at centrexsoftware.com. 
what email template do I want to send to the client when an email uh, is created and when a client portal is created, I can click here and I can use the client portal reset password or new client internal notification. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And then for reset password, I can do the same thing. I can click on client portal reset password. And then I can choose what I want my client to see or not see when they log into the portal. So I want them to see the profile, the income and expense sheet, maybe notes, maybe tasks, banking information, documents, payments, generated PDF, uploaded files, e-signed docs. I don't want them seeing credits or drafts. I, want, I don't want them seeing fees, but I want to show stage or status. Okay, and then over here on the right, you've got announcement page along with short announcements. This announcements page, you can say, welcome to your client portal. Okay, and this will be on the first page when they sign in. And then, of course, you have a little announcements section here. So, for example, if you're going to be closing the office early that day, you can come in here and put a little announcement and click on save portal settings. So now when your client logs into their client portal, these are the settings for that client portal. These welcome email templates we give you out of the box in the software, and you can always find them here in the email marketing tab. Okay, so if I look here, I can see client portal reset password template, and I can drill into this template here, and you can see here, I can see a very basic template uh, that's going to be sent to this client. Okay, when it comes to short codes for password and username, that's going to be automatically generated for the client portal. The short codes are open bracket, username, close bracket, open bracket, password, close bracket, all caps. And when you click, when you create a client portal for a customer, this automatic email will be sent and these fields will be automatically populated with data so they can log into that client portal. Okay, so let's jump back into the admin tab. Let's jump back into settings. And the next one we have here is email triggers. You guys are going to have the ability to create all sorts of email triggers based on what we call system events. So this drop down is filled with all sorts of different types of system events. The most popular system event is a status change. I want to email automatically my client based on a status change. So I'm going to choose status change. I'm then going to choose the status. I want to send an email on, so let's say contract sent, and then I can come here, I can choose the file type, it'll always be business loans, or it'll be credit repair, or debt settlement, or law firms, or call centers, wherever you're coming to us from. What company do you want the email coming from? Well, I want it coming from my company. What message do you want to send? Your messages are always going to come from the email marketing tab. I can choose a message. Who do you want the email going to? I want it going to the client. And you've got other options here as well. Attorney, enroller, user, company, client. Okay, where do I want the email address coming from? I can say assign to user on file. So that's that would be the sales rep on file. And then the reply address, where do I want it going to? And then I can click on save trigger. And now you can see here, you've got a trigger built into the system. You guys can get very, very creative with all sorts of different types of triggers you can build in the software based on system events. These are all the system events built into the system. We do offer a trigger consulting package here at Centric Software. So if it's something where you don't have the time to do it or you don't know how to do it or you simply just don't want to do it and you really want a really nice professional job done where triggers are going out for every status change, for every system event, both to your staff and your client so everyone's being notified at the right time, we have some consulting packages here that you can talk to your sales representative about on building this out for you. Okay, so great trigger system built into the software. You guys always have the ability as well to list all email triggers. And you can see here, it'll show you every single email trigger you have built into the software. And I think we just got done building just one. So you'll see that one right here. Okay, so that's how you build email triggers into the software. Let's jump into admin. Let's jump back into settings. So we talked about customer portal settings. We talked about email triggers. Don't worry about state setup. That's for industries where states are regulated and what they can and cannot do. Call settings. If I jump into call settings, I always make sure I check this box. Copy call notes to general notes. And then I click on save settings. So when you guys are tracking a phone call in, a, in the software, there's a note box. And when you fill out notes in the tracking section for phone calls, that note will automatically be transferred to the notes section in the client dashboard. Okay, so if I were to give you guys an example and I come to the contacts tab and I come into Al's laundry service here and I want to track a phone call, 
Okay, this notes box is essentially a phone call note box, but if I take a note here and click on save call, that note will end up right here in the notes section in the software for you to view. Okay, so if I jump back into the admin tab and I jump back into settings and I jump back into call settings, you can see here that I've got this box checked. Okay, if you guys are using an integrated phone system, you can see lots of different rule actions here for that phone system. This only works if you're using an integrated phone system. And then under dispositions, when you guys are tracking a phone call, these are the options that are out of the box for disposition. So I, I, I tried calling the customer, there was a no answer, it connected, I left a message, it was wrong number. You guys can create your own dispositions as well. So I can say bad number and I can click on save or I can say something along the lines of uh, not interested, okay? And I can click on save trigger. And then over here, I can suppress certain call dispositions as well if I don't want to see them. These are out of the box. So if you don't wanna see them, you can click on them and you can click on save exclusions. And now you'll no longer see the no answer in your call dispositions, okay? So just some nice way to put some custom dispositions in the software along with the out of the box dispositions we give you. Okay, let's go back to the admin tab. Let's jump back into settings. And the next one after call settings is note templates. Obviously, if you're a sales rep in the software, you're gonna be taking lots of notes after you make a phone call or after you speak with a customer. If you find yourself taking the same note over and over again, you can come in here and create note templates. So for example, called client, left message and will send email. And I can click on uh, who I wanna share this with and then I can click on save template and you can see this template down here below. Let's go ahead and create another one. Spoke with client sending contracts. I wanna share this with my sales team and I wanna click on save template. Let's do one more. Maybe there's another template note saying um, client wants to come on board. Okay, and maybe I wanna share this with sales as well and I wanna click on save template. And then I can drag and drop these up and down depending on how I want them displayed when I take that note. And then of course I can always come over here and I can edit this as well. Maybe I wanna share this note with everyone, click on save template. Maybe I want to click on uh, this one here and I wanna share with everyone, save template. And then maybe I want to click on this one here and I want to click on everyone and save template. So now if I come into the contacts tab and I jump into Al's laundry service and I click on notes, you can see here I have templates. So spoke with client sending contracts, there's my template. And then I can notify a user uh, with this template or I can CC someone on this template and I can also categorize this note as a sales note and I can click on save note. And now you can see here at this date and time, this user created this note in the software. Okay, so you've got note templates built into the software as well. Let's jump into the admin tab. Let's jump into settings. And the next thing we see here after note templates is our click sign settings. The click sign settings is the electronic signature settings in our software. We own this company, it's our company. Uh, we built it proprietary for uh, Centric Software and all of our clients and it's fully integrated into the software. So we always want to enable this. You guys have the ability for your clients to mouse uh, their signature or type their signature, mouse only their signature or type only their signature. Most of my clients do both. So the client can either type in their SIG or they can draw it on an iPad or an iPhone or using their mouse in the software. Okay, as we scroll down here, you notice here that you can use short codes in any one of these boxes. Okay, so you can say, if you wish to do so in the message section, I can say hi and then I can do first name like you can see right here as an example. There is a list on our support website of all of our document tags. We call these document tags or short codes, okay? And then you can write a bit of a message to your client when an electronic document is sent to them. This is going to be the subject of the email. So for example, we could write Centrix Software eSign Document. That's going to be the message of the email. Uh, the subject title of the email. The message is gonna be hi first name and then I can write a bit of a message here and I can say thank you, Centrex Software or your company name or whatever. Okay, and then document signed. So when a document is signed in the software, an automatic email is gonna be sent to the customer with a copy of that document. 
So I can come into subject line and I can say your signed e -sign doc, and then I can write a message as well. Please see e -sign document attached. Thank you, team. Okay, and then down here at the bottom, we've got Centrex Demo. This is my company, so this will be your company. We want to turn this on. The from address, I always do e -sign at and then your company domain name .com. That's who you want the email coming from. And then what name do you want it coming from? I always just put the company name here. So whatever your company name is, put it here. Whatever <clears throat> your company email address is, I always put e -sign at. Okay, and then I can come up here and click on Save Settings. Okay, so now these are your electronic s signature settings built into the software, and now those are done, and you don't have to touch those unless you want to in the future. Okay, let's jump back into the admin tab. Let's jump back into settings. And we've got some other options here. You may or may not have access to some of these buttons. If you guys are using an integrated dialer, integrated phone system, let's say 5.9 or Ytel or Vici Dial, <clears throat> you're going to have some of these buttons here in the software so you can set up those settings. For those of you who are lending institutions or brokerage firms and you're submitting files to OnDeck Capital, we do have a full integration with OnDeck Capital. If you do have portal credentials, you can come in here and put in those uh, portal credentials and you can submit uh, packages directly into OnDeck Capital's portal. Let's go back to the admin tab. Let's go back into settings. <clears throat> Last but not least, we've got scripts. This is our sales script functionality built in the software. You can create a new sales script or you can edit an existing sales script. We also offer consulting packages for sales script building because it is a bit difficult to figure out. It's not terribly difficult, but it does take a little bit of practice. If you're interested in building in really cool sales scripts into the software, we can help you build out these sales scripts. So if I come to the contacts tab and I jump into, let's say, Al's laundry service here, I can actually load a script up here at the top. Let's say it's the in-depth script and I can go from page to page on this script and I can also click buttons and fill in data points in this script. And when I go to the next page, it automatically saves it in the software. Okay, so if I jump back into the admin tab, I jump back into settings, and we look at scripts, you have the ability to change out and edit those sales scripts at any time. Okay, and then to polish off the settings, if we jump into the admin tab and click on settings one more time, we have something called budget analysis. If I click on budget analysis, for, for those of you who are using the budget analysis in the software, we give you out of the box income lines, expense lines, liquid asset lines, and other asset lines as well. You can come in here and edit these at any time you want, okay? This is our budget analysis built into our software. So if I come into the contacts tab and I drill into Al's laundry service here, and I scroll down the left-hand side, you've got income and expense sheet. This is the budget analysis. I can click on view budget analysis. This is essentially going to give you total income, total expenses, debt to income ratios, cash flow, and total assets. And you can come in here and put numbers and it will populate this budget analysis. Okay, so again, if I jump into the admin tab, I jump into settings, I can jump into budget analysis and I can edit any one of those line items for income, expenses, assets, liquid assets, um, anytime you want. Okay, so back in the admin tab, we've covered roles, we've covered teams, We've covered companies, we've added users into the software, we took a look at the system log, and then we jumped into settings, and we looked at settings as well. So that pretty much wraps up the admin tab. If you have any questions, go ahead and talk to your support rep or your sales rep, and we wish you the best of luck.